Hello and welcome to another video of my quest system series. In today's episode we are going to wrap up our little combat system by adding a health bar to our enemy and also giving the player some kind of attack to deal damage. Before we start I just wanted to let you know that there was another engine version upgrade. So currently I'm using 4.14.3 and you should probably upgrade as well. And I imported some new textures, enemy bar dev, enemy bar fill and enemy border. The download link for those will be in the description. So make sure to download that. And now let's get started. First off we want to create a widget for our enemy that shows its name, level and health. So let's go to our widgets folder, right click and create a new widget blueprint. Let's call that enemy widget. Open it up set the setting here to desired on screen then we will remove the canvas panel start with the size box here we will check width and height override to 200 by 74 pixel and afterwards add a canvas to our size box Then in our canvas we will start with an image. It will be aligned to the left center anchor here. Position in X and Y will be 0, but the alignment in Y will be 0.5. The size in X will be 198 pixel and in Y 67. Let's increase the Z order to 1 and as the image we will select our enemy border. Now we've got that appearing here. Afterwards we will add a progress bar to the canvas panel. Let's call that health bar. Position here will be 18 in X and 32 in Y. Size in X will be 181 and in Y 26. The Z we will leave at 0 so it appears beneath our border. And then we will expand the style, expand the background image and search for enemy bar default. Draw that as an image. Go to the fill image and there we will select enemy bar fill. Also draw that as an image. Now let's set the percent to something and we will adjust the fill color and opacity to something like a dark red. That should work. Afterwards we will add a text to our canvas panel. Call that the name text. Make sure it is set to be a variable. We will anchor it to the upper center. Position will be 0 in X and 8 in Y. Then we will set the alignment in X to 0.5, increase the Z order to 2, and set the size to something like 145 by 26. Also we will select a different font, let's use Georgia Italic, and lower the size to 16 maybe, that should work. Then set the justification to align text center and give that an opaque shadow color. As a default text you could type in something like spider. Also we will add one more text which will be the level text. That will be a variable as well. Anchor it to the lower left corner. Set the position x to 8 and in y to minus 42. We will check size to content for this one. Set the default text to 9. Increase the Z order to 2. And as a font we will select Astra with a size of 20. Here we will also set the justification to center and increase the alpha of our shadow color to 1. Alright, that's it for our enemy widget. We can compile, save, close it. Now we also need to put that in our master enemy class, so let's go to our blueprints, characters, enemies, 
master enemy, head over to the viewport, add a widget component. Yeah, you can give it a name here. I will just leave that as widget. Smooth that up in Z to 110 something. Space will be screen. Widget class will be the enemy widget. The draw size will be the same size as the one in our size box of the widget, which is 200 by 74. Also, let's scroll down and uncheck visible by default. And we don't want this to use collision, so just set that to no collision. And uncheck generate overlap events. Okay, compile, save. Then we need some more variables here. The first one will be the name, which will be a text or a string. Then we will need the level of this enemy, which is an integer. Also, we want to have a variable called max health, which is an integer, and then another one called health, so just the current amount. Make sure that we set the default values of that, so the max health will be, say, 200. Level can be something like 5. And the default name will just be spider. Then we will go to the event graph and on event begin play, before we do anything here, we will set the health to our maximum health. That way in our child classes we only have to modify the max health variable and don't need to worry about a health variable. Afterwards we need some new functions. The first one will be setup widget. What we'll do here is drag in our widget component, get user widget object, cast that to the enemy widget. If the cast fails, just return. But if not, we will get the as enemy widget here and promote that to a variable called enemy widget. Then let's get the name text here. And we will set text to our name variable. Also, we want to get the level text. Basically do the same thing, set text, but this time we'll set it to level, convert that to a text and uncheck the use grouping. Now you also want to update the health in our widget, so let's do a separate function for that, update widget health, drag in the enemy widget, get the health bar set percent and the percent will be our health converted to a float divided by our maximum health also converted to a float plug that in for the percent and afterwards return then go back to the setup function and here we will call update widget health. Finally we also want to show our widget so just drag the component in and set visibility to true. Then we can return. Let's go to the event graph now and after we set all of our blackboard variables. Ah, oh, we've got some debugging stuff here right now, let's remove that. And after we set our attack range, we want to set up our widget. Then we will right click somewhere down here and implement event any damage. So when we receive damage, we first want to check whether we are already dead. So at a branch. If not, we will set our health to our current health minus the damage that we will first round and we also want to clamp that so it never goes below zero and never above our maximum health. Plug that in for the set health node 
then we will update the widget health and afterwards add a branch by holding down B and left clicking. Now we want to check whether our health equals zero, so that means that we died. If it's true, we will get the damage causer of that killing strike basically and promote that to a variable that is called killed by actor. We will promote that if it's true. And then we will call the death event on death. Okay, compile save. Also we want to go to our death event and right here when we disable the collision we want to drag in our widget component and destroy that. Just so that we don't have to see the health bar that 4 seconds during which our enemy just lays on the ground. That's it for the enemy widget thing. If we hit play we can see our spider that is level 5 and has full HP currently. So that's working. Now we need a way to deal damage to our master enemy. But before we leave this class I just want to create some categories for our variables for organizing purposes. Select the is dead for category type in gameplay. So there will be variables that will be accessed during gameplay and then there will be the ones that will be modified in the children classes like max health or attack distance go to patrol radius that will be one of this so we can call that children defaults the behavior tree will also go to our children defaults has seen player will go to gameplay the attack range will be a default attack montage as well the attack distance will be modified in our children classes as well as the attack damage name, max health, and level. The health variable will be accessed during gameplay and not in our children classes. The enemy widget will go to gameplay as well and the killed by actor will go to gameplay as well. Okay, compile and save. Now close the master enemy and we need some attack for our player. Please note that this is not a series about a skill or a real combat system, so we'll do something very simple, just a basic AoE explosion attack without any fancy animations. But we need a particle system for that, so let's go to start a content. Particles, right click on P explosion, duplicate, P underscore player attack. Double click to open that up. Let's remove the sparks fire, light and smoke. Select the fireball, go to initial size, expand that here, set the maximum to something much higher like 300. Also go to the shockwave initial size and here we will set the distribution to distribution vector constant and here type in 500 750 and 750 and that should just do fine. Afterwards we will go to a third person character, open the blueprint and we will add one variable here which will be called can attack question mark set the default value for this to true and somewhere up here we will right click and search for left mouse button because we will use that one to launch an attack first we will check if we can attack if that's true we will set can attack to false so we cannot attack twice before the cooldown basically run off of that then we want to spawn emitter at location. Emitter template will be our player attack. The location will be get actor location of ourselves. So we spawn an explosion around us and now we want to check whether we hit something. So what we do is a multi sphere trace for objects. Start and end of the sphere trace will be our actor location. Then you have to type in something for the radius, 
for me something like 300 worked fine. Check the trace complex. For the object types we will make an array and we only want to check for pawns. There will be no actors to ignore and we will ignore ourselves. If you want to you can select the draw debug type persistent maybe so we can see the trace. After we trace we want to use a sequence first meaning for the then zero path we want to get our out hits so everything that we hit and launch it for each loop. Now for every hit result we want to break that get the hit actor and apply damage. The damage causer will be a reference to ourselves. That's really important, otherwise our enemy won't notice that it was killed by the player. And then type in some damage that you want to apply, something like 80 maybe. So we need three attacks for our enemy. Afterwards for the then one we want to add a delay for let's say one second. And afterwards set can attack to true again. So after a delay of one second we will be able to launch our next attack. Let's add a comment box around that. Left mouse button to launch AOE attack. Compile and save. Now we can actually play and here's our spider. Sees us and attacks us. If we hit the left mouse button you can see our explosion and after three times it was killed. Maybe the radius is just a bit too big. Set that to 250. Yeah, that's better. After you found out a good radius, set the draw debug type to none. Another thing I just wanted to do is to go to our master enemy, add a new variable here, which is called exp for kill so the reward our player earns when killing this enemy make that an integer put that under children defaults and let's give it a default value of 50 then go to our event on death and let's add a sequence here first we will call on death and then we want to get the killed by actor cast that to the third person character and if that was successful we will add experience points with our XP for kill amount. The other thing I wanted to do is just drag over our spider somewhere up here so it doesn't directly attack us and copy it to add a second one maybe rotate that and now we can hit play. CR2 running around. And if we kill it, we earn some XP. Actually, we are able to fire our attack permanently, so let's see what's going on there. Alright, so when our can attack is true, we want to set it to false. And now we should have one second delay before we can cast it again. Alright great that's working. In the next video we will finish off our hunting template and also extend our AI behavior so that after the spider has followed us for some distance it will go back to its original location like it's done in most MMORPGs. Alright see you in the next video.